So good morning students. In the last class we had discussed about the male reproductive system. So today we will talk about the female reproductive system. This is also very important for five marks. Female reproductive system. So here, female reproductive system, it consists, see, how the male reproductive system will have three types of organ, that is primary sex organ, secondary sex organ, and external genitalia. Like that only, the female reproductive system also has three parts. First is primary sex organ. And what are the primary sex organs over here means that is a pair of ovaries. What it is? It is a pair of ovaries. Here, what is the function of these ovaries? This may ask for one mark. What are the functions of ovaries? Here there are two functions of ovaries. That is the production of ova. The ova or else we can also call it as the egg. That is going to be produced in what? In the ovaries, which is present in pairs. Second thing, that is, these are the functions. So these functions will be asked for one mass, right? The functions of ovaries. Okay. So first function that is the production of ova or egg. Egg, which is a female reproductive cell or a female gamete. Okay, so next function that is production of ovarian hormones. Ovarian hormones. This is the second function of what? Ovaries. So here this is a primary sex organ. In male it was testes. Here it is ovaries. Next up, what about the secondary sex organ? Secondary sex organ are, which is also known as the accessory ducts. Accessory are only secondary sex organ. That much is enough. So this secondary sex organ includes a pair of oviducts, a pair of OB ducts and this OB ducts insert which will carry the ova from the ovaries. This OB ducts, which is also known as the fallopian tube. What it is also known as? It is also known as the fallopian tube. Except this, it also consists of a uterus, then it cannot be there that it is the cervix. Then one more thing, a birth canal will be there that is the vagina, which is also known as the birth canal. Okay, this is a secondary sex organ. One more part is there, external genitalia. External Genitalia. What are that external? What are that parts though, which comes under the external genitalia? Means that is mons pubis, labia majora, labia majora, labia majora. The next hymen. Clitoris. So, this all will come under the external genitalia. Primary sex organ, pair of ovaries. Secondary sex organ, oviducts, uterus, cervix, and vagina. External genitalia, bones, pubis, 
they were majura they were minora aiman and clistodes so these are uh, this all are the parts of the female reproductive system which is divided into three categories primary sex organ secondary sex organ and external genitalia so now next uh, we will see about and uh, next we will see about the structure of the female reproductive system so before that this particular where is located how it is uh, in involved in the reproduction process that we will see here all here this uh, female reproductive system it is located in the pelvic region where it is located located in pelvic region okay and uh, all this whatever the parts of the female reproductive system just now we had talked that is primary sex organ secondary sex organ external genitalia along with that see all parts of female reproductive system female reproductive system along with one more structure is there that it is the mammary gland along with mammary gland okay along with mammary gland this female reproductive system are integrated and structural uh, integrated structurally and functionally to support the process what are the different process means say you know that in human beings female reproductive system is responsible for giving birth to the young ones okay giving birth, birth to, to the young ones who is responsible that is the females through the female reproductive system only the young ones are going to take birth so in that what are the process which are involved see along with this system there is also a presence of a pair of mammary gland that is also involved in this particular uh, nourishing or caring or giving birth to the young ones so it involves in the process such as uh, ovulation first process is ovulation second fertilization third that is pregnancy then last birth and childbirth so here first process which is related with the female reproductive system here that it is it is a process of formation of ova sorry it is a process of release of ova from the ovary release of ova from the ovary ova or egg so this process will take place in female reproductive system and that process is known as the ovulation second fertilization by insemination the male gamete that is the sperm is going to transported into the female reproductive system okay where the female gamete and the male gamete is going to fuse that also will take place in the female reproductive system then the third one pregnancy that is the gestation period pregnancy of 9 months Nine months, seven days. Okay, during which the embryo or the fetus or the young one is going to nourish inside the womb of the mother. Okay, that also taking place in what in the female reproductive. Okay, then birth, birth and childcare. During childcare or after the birth, through the mammary gland, milk is going to be secreted. okay which is nourishing 
feeding to the young ones. Okay, so all these process taking place in what? In the female body. Okay, next uh, we will go for the structures of this particular uh, female reproductive system. So as I told you, ovaries are the primary sex organs. As I told you, ovaries are primary female sex organ that produces the gamete, that is the ova, and as well as it produces or secretes the hormone, that it is the ovarian hormones. Okay, so the ovaries are located in the lower abdominal region. Where? Well, in the lower abdominal. Ovaries are located. Ovaries are located in lower abdomen region, that means in the pelvic region. Lower abdomen region. Okay, whereas the male reproductive system testes are located outside the abdomen. Okay, but here it is present in the inner side of the abdomen but at the pelvic region. Okay, then each ovary is about the each ovary size. If we see about the size, each ovary size is about 2 to 4 centimeter in length. How much it is? It is 2 to 4 centimeter in length and here these ovaries are attached with the uterus. Why? By what? By the Ligaments. See here, ovaries are attached to, to the wall of or to the pelvic wall by what? There will be no bones for the attachment. Here, these ovaries are attached to the pelvic wall or the lower abdomen by ligaments. Okay. The next term, each ovary is covered by the thin epithelium. For example, this is one ovary. Okay. This ovary is covered by a thin epithelium layer and this thin epithelium layer is known as the germinal epithelium. Epithelium layer which is known as germinal epithelium and this ovary has that gives the outer cortex region this is the cortex region and the middle region we can that gives the outer cortex region this is the cortex region and the middle region called it as the medulla region inner medulla region Okay, this is the peripheral region of the ovary, which is known as the cortex region. Okay, so and the middle region that is the inner medulla region, or it has the two zones. Okay, so this is how this we will further we will discuss in detail. This we will further we will discuss in detail how in this ovary the ova how in this ovary the ova are going to produce. Before that, we have to see the structure of what of the female reproductive system. So let's see here, female reproductive system. So let's see here, These are the 
pair of ovals which are pair of ovals which are oval in shape oval in shape what are this these are the pair of ovaries which are located in the lower abdominal region and uh, here it is attached with the oval duct okay oval duct means some tube like structures will be there from both the ovaries
Now listen here. This is a female reproduction system. Okay. This diagram only have class of five with the labels. Okay. So here, the first of all, ovaries which are located in a, a female reproductive system, which is located in the lower abdominal region, that is, here the ovaries are attached with the pelvic wall by what? By the ligaments. Okay. First of all, a pair of ovaries, these are the ovaries. Ovaries, which are attached with the oviducts. Okay. What are the oviducts? Here, sir? See, ovaries, I told you, the size is 2 to 4 centimeter in length. This is already in a top. Here, this tubes, what you are seeing here, these tubes are known as the oviducts. Oviducts are, is also known as the fallopian tube. And the size of the oviduct, or the oviduct are going to transport the ova, whatever the ova, which is going to be produced into these ovaries, that is going to be conveyed by whom? By this ovary, oviducts, or the fallopian tube. Whose size is about the 10 to 12 centimeter in length. Okay, this is also, and here a pair of ovaries which are associated with the pair of oviducts. Okay, this oviducts also has certain regions, certain parts. First of all, this oviduct, uh, uh, sorry, this ovary. Uh, immediately the ovaries are holding the ovaries and which are responsible for collecting the ova which is going to release from the, from the ovary and these small finger like projections just above the ovaries that we can call it as the fibrillae. What are these? These are the fibrillae. What are fibrillae? These are the finger like projections. Finger like projections. What is the function of this fimbria? Uh, that is to collect the ova. Collect the ova from ovaries. Whatever the ova which is going to produce inside these ovaries, that is going to be collected by whom? By this finger like projection like this. That is going to collect the ova from the ovaries. Okay, the next year, here, just after the finger like projection, there is a, uh, what we call it, some funnel shaped structure is there. Here it is, this is the funnel shaped structure in the ovida, and this funnel shaped structure, a funnel shaped part, is known as the infundibulum. What it is known as? It is known as the infundibulum which is located just above the fimbria. Okay, the next uh, infundibulum, then the edges of infundibulum, you can see it causes a finger like projection to which we are calling that the fimbria, which helps in the collection of ova after ovulation. So, then this infundibulum, again, only this part, this funnel shaped part, we are calling it as the infundibulum. The region above and this infundibulum continues with a region which is a wider tube like structure and this wider tube we can call it as the ampulla. What it is? It is called as the ampulla. Okay. And the remaining tube from after the ampulla is known as the isthmus. It is known as the isthmus. So, this fimbria, infundibulum, ampulla, and isthmus, these four parts are the parts of fallopian tube. Or else, this all together will constitute the fallopian tube. Okay, this whole tube, we can call it as the fallopian 
tube. Okay. And uh, here is, once again I will tell you the ovaries are attached with the ligaments to the uterus as well as for the pelvic wall. Okay. Then here the oviduct is there. First part of the oviduct that is finger like projection just above the ovaries. That finger like projections are known as the fibrillae which helps in the collection of ova during time of ovulation. Okay. Then this part continues the funnel shaped structure and that funnel shaped structure is known as the infundibulum. What it is known as? It is known as the infundibulum. Then why the part is there after infundibulum? That it is known as the ampulla and totally this dust is known as the isthmus. What it is known as? It is known as the isthmus. The next it has a this isthmus will open into a narrow lumen part of the uterus and this part this is the main part of the female reproductive system altogether this part we can call it as the uterus what it is uterus uterus which is also known as the womb of the mother where the embryo is going to develop what it is known as it is known as the uterus here the uterus what is the shape of the uterus means the shape of uterus is the inverted ear shape what is the shape of um, or the uh, uterus that, that it is the inverted ear shape and these ovaries are attached with the uterus by the ligaments you can see here these are the ligaments which are attached to the ovaries then next up here the uterus this is the uterus which opens into a canal and this canal is known as the cervix what it is known as it is known as the cervix and the cervix have a cavity and that cavity is known as the cervical canal. This cavity is known as the cervical canal or cervical canal. At last, here, this is the vagina or the birth canal, what we call. Okay. This last part is known as the vagina. Vagina this is also known as the birth canal. And lastly, this uterus, it is made up of three walls. This uterus, it is made up of three walls. What are that walls? Let's see here. It is made up of three walls, three wall layers. And what are that wall layers means? It is <coughs> external thin membranous. This is the outermost or external. You can see this is the outermost or external thin. It is very thin. Okay, very thin membranous. That it is known as the perimaterium. What is this? This layer is the outermost layer, a thin membranous layer, which is known as the perimaterium. Okay, outermost thin membranous layer. There I will write outermost thin membranous layer which is known as the perimeterium. This is the first wall layer. Second wall layer, wall layer which is the middle layer. Here you can see this is the middle layer which is made up of smooth muscles. Okay. This middle layer which is made up of smooth muscles are known as the myometerium. It 
liquid of smooth muscles and which is the middle layer outer layer thin membranous layer okay innermost and glandular layer that is known as the endometrium okay so here uterus has three wall layers outermost is the perimeterium middle is the myometrium and inner is the endometrium see here the endometrium undergoes into the cyclic changes okay cyclic changes during the menstrual cycle here i write about the endometrium myometrium and perimeterium see here sometimes they last for one month what is the role of endometrium what is the role of myometrium that's why the endometrium undergoes and goes cyclic changes during menstrual cycle means uh, during menstruation this layer will undergo certain changes it will become thick or it will become thin during what during the menstrual cycle okay because this layer is only responsible for for the menstrual cycle or for the menses okay this layer is going to shed off by releasing some blood or some debris of the uterus so that's why it is responsible for what for the menstrual cycle next up here that um, myometrium exhibits one more hole or one more layer that is myometrium in the middle layer which is made up of smooth muscles this layer will undergo into the strong contraction undergoes strong contraction contraction during delivery of child are during birth of child this myometrium layer that it is made up of smooth muscle it will undergo into this strong contraction okay so this is about what about the female reproductive system we had talked about the primary sex organ that is about the ovaries then the secondary sex organ that is about the ovida uterus cervix and vagina okay here the fallopian tube or the ovida which has certain regions fimbria infundibulum ampulla and pelvis okay and uh, here this narrow region you can call it as the fundus okay and this is the uterus which is made up of three wall layers as just now i had explained you the next here the uh, uh, canal is there which we can call it as the cervix and there is a presence of a cavity that is the cervical canal and lastly vagina okay next we will talk about the external genitalia all the labels are very important at least 10 labels should be there for this diagram then only you can score 5 marks next it is external genitalia external genitalia it includes certain parts of the female reproductive system it is mons pubis labia majora 
Nivea Mayura. Hi, man. And last, that is his stories. Okay, one by one, you will see here. Yes. Mo uh, most cube is here. So, here it is a cushion of fatty tissue. It is a cushion of fatty tissue. On the end, means outside the pelvic region, vagina opens by certain external parts. So that we are calling it as the external genitalia. The first one, that is the mons pubis, outermost part of the external genitalia. It is a cushion of fatty tissue which is covered by skin and pubic hair. Covered by skin and pubic hair. Whatever the pubic hair will be there, that is on the mons pubis. The next uh, that moves cube is there is a labia majora which is a fat fleshy folds of tissues. What is fleshy folds of tissues just below the labia majora? Okay, fleshy folds of tissues this, which extends down to the moons pubis. Next comes the labia majora. These are the Pair of pair of folds of tissue, folds of tissue under the vaginal region. Under the vaginal region. The next hyamon inside the vagina. There is a presence of a thin membrane that it is known as the hyamel. It is a thin membrane in vagina. And one more thing, hyamel is a, not an indicator of the coitus. This hyamel is going to rupture during the first intercourse. Not only by the intercourse, sexual intercourse, this hyaman may rupture due to some other reasons, such as horse riding, sudden fall, and all, sudden injuries. By that also, the hyaman may, may broken down. The next please stories. This is a small, uh, uh, small projection or a tiny finger-like structure which lies upper junction of the vagina. Okay, which act as an. Uh, external genitalia in the female reproductive system. So this is about the whole thing about the female reproductive system. In the next class, we will continue with the memory gland, the structure of memory gland. The next one talks about it in the gametogenesis. Okay, thank you.